want to buy or sell a house? Do you want to make big money in real estate? Here's your chance. It's Flipping Houses for Rookies with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. Okay, here we are. Another episode of Flipping Houses with Rookie. How are you, Peter? Has a week gone by already? Oh, my goodness. Feels like just yesterday I saw you. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. You did see me yesterday. That's you, why it seems like that. You did not. <laughs> Out there working on a renovation with the crazy guys. Yeah, we got a house. It's, it's my first renovation. This is awesome. Yeah. Crazy. I, I was uh, I was laying down black mulch yesterday because there's a few spots. You know, you're gonna have to watch me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like you know, I I do landscaping, so I'm gonna have to restrain me once oh, in a while. Oh, so you're not gonna be Pete the pro now. You're gonna be Pete the landscaper. I have many hats. I'm gonna revert to some of my em, my employee, self employed, you know, not Mr. Big Shot real estate guy things ah. once in a while. But I did get the lawn company to do the era, the, the dethatching as I watched. All I needed was a cigar. I should have had that. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I would look tough, you know, You're staring at him. You're on one of him. my jobs yeah. running it yeah. without a cigar? I know. Pete, I, that's, that's my point. I, Pete, I need to keep it in the car. Pete, you're ruining my reputation. Even if it isn't lit, I'll pull it out. Not a good thing. Put my sunglasses on and glare at him, right? Not a good thing. You okay. have. To, you know what the cigar does? It scares people, I thought. Shows authority. That's what I thought. I saw you come out of the car one day with your sunglasses, the cigar. And you just stood there staring at everybody. Did you Did you see what happened when the guys were in the house and they were cleaning out? And I came in the kitchen and I took two puffs of the cigar and two of them arrived and said, oh, you're here. <laughs> the guy with the cigar is in they charge. Could smell the cigar all the way okay. in the attic. <laughs> okay. Keep it. The guy with the cigar is in charge. All there you right. go. Got it. There you go. All right, so we're episode number 24, Peter. Yikes. And I got to say that I really appreciate everybody listening because uh, we have thousands of downloads. And uh, I just want to make sure that if you're listening to our podcast that you subscribe because I want subscribers. So if you're on Stitcher or iTunes or any one of the different devices you're using, please subscribe so that we can uh, get others to find us. Uh, you and I... Uh, <coughs> get all choked up. You and I um, get absolutely nothing for this. You got that right. <laughs> we just kind of do this out of the kindness of our heart. Oh, uh, you mean us? I thought you meant me. Oh, <laughs> no, we do this out of the kindness of our heart. So the only the best thing you can do for us is to become a subscriber. Okay, it's for us sharing all of our information and our experiences. We just ask you to be a subscriber, which is not a hard thing. Yeah, and this data, I mean, I, I do this because I'm learning every time I sit here. This is amazing. Yeah. This is amazing data. You've come, across, you've come a long way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so, so episode on number... On a scale of one to... Never mind. Tell me later. <laughs> scale of one to ten, where am I? On the hundred. One to hundred. Oh, God. <laughs> You know, I, I, once in a while I think, well, I think I'm catching up to him because he hasn't said anything new to me in like a week or two. Nothing new has spawned in my head. And the next thing you know, boom, well, this whole new area opens up. So for the record, you haven't gone over 50% yet. Oh, I, I didn't think that even. And oh, yeah, by the way, yeah. the only way you're going to go over 50% is the, with checks. <laughs> you have to bring me checks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Without we'll me doing one. much. We're working <laughs> on one. All right. Episode number 24. Today we're going to call it Champions Take the Luck out of the game. Oh, I like the sound of that. Champions take the luck out of the game. Take the luck out of a game and yeah. become a champion. So the game obviously is becoming a real estate investor. Mm -hmm. So really, I mean, it was because I didn't want to make the title too long. Champions take the luck out of investing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. So uh, what do you think that means? I don't know, but my mother wishes me good luck every day. I keep thinking, this isn't luck. I'm trying to figure this out for real and get the data and how it really works. Right. And everything I learn from you and everything I read, it's, you know, learn how to do it. Right. You know? Right. So yeah. one thing that I have learned over uh, over over 10 years of doing this, uh, which, by the way, I want, I want to uh, clarify. I've been doing this over 10 years. Um, sometimes I did it part-time. Sometimes I do it full-time. Mm -hmm. It, like, kind of goes in and out of my life. So I've had years where I've done seven, eight deals a month and closed on two or three. Mm -hmm. And I've had years where I've done two or three deals a month. You know what the interesting thing was that I was thinking the other day? What? This is kind of crazy. You're not going to believe this. Oh, well, it's coming from you. I'm going to believe it. When I was doing two or three deals a month, I was always doing 100000 120000 a year, 
net money. So in other words, I had a regular job. I oh. traveled 50, uh, 40 weeks out of the year for yeah. five years. Yeah, I remember that. all 50 states. I saw you doing that. Right? I still made 100, 120 grand a year. Mm. I think I made that same amount of money, maybe a little bit more, maybe 200,000 a year, you know, doing it full time. Okay, explain that one. I think I was, I was thinking the other day that uh, it was because uh, I was at the beginning so I was still spending money to learn. Like for example, I spent an eight or nine grand a month on advertising. Yeah, I still can't figure out how you did that. We did everything. That's how. No, I can't figure out how you get the money. <laughs> oh well, we were. We, well, I would just. I would. I would wholesale houses. Yeah. You know, not every month, but every other month, I'd wholesale a house. I had a partner that had money, so he kind of floated us. You know, so if we That's had a true. bad month, you know. Yeah, if you can float, if you can do one wholesale, that'll that'll cover at least those expenses, so you can do more. Yeah, so if I minimally did one every other month, you know, and made you know fifteen or twenty grand, then I, I had the month covered. Hmm. You know. Yeah. Uh, I had an acquisition manager and a sales manager. I just had overhead. That's what I was guessing. So you you just spent a lot to get those, and if you scale back and do part time, you can almost do the same, or just scale back and not throw so much money and. Well, so, what happened was, is I got very picky. I started choosing what I was going to do and not do. Oh, okay. I guess you learned that as you went. You refined well, the, it, didn't the, you? Well, the, the best thing is, is by the time I had gone kind of on my own, if you would, uh, meaning I was just kind of doing part-time, mm. I had done, done, I don't know how many deals, 50, 60, 70 deals, something, probably seven, 60 or 70 deals. All right. Well, before I had busted everything up, I had my acquisition manager uh, and my sales manager do an analysis of all the deals to find out which deals I made the most amount of money on. Mm. And it was all it was was just deal jackets. We had deal jackets in a drawer. Okay. In the files. Yeah. yeah. So, so this sounds stupid, but just a, a point to make, like mm-hmm. something that's like so simple could be so confusing. How do you organize all those deals? Do you do it by time? Do you do, how do you do it? How do you organize those deals? So you go through it. How, so about, you, how about by types? Right. How do you do that? Well, you, a slot deal is one. A cash deal is another. A rehab retail is another. Get we, the did, we did all of that stuff. So you, you, you separate them by type? No. But what we ended up doing is the number of the house is how we categorized the deals. That's how we kept track of them in the, the drawer. The address? Yeah. Oh. So if it was a 14, it was in the front. If it was a 230, mm-hmm. it was in the back. <laughs> By address. Well, and that's after doing multiple testing, not testing, just kind of making it, trying to make it easy. Yeah. And well, that's I, what I, we ended up with. I know. I mean, something that, that's, it sounds simple. It sounds stupid. But well, you know what? We fumbled <laughs> around with that because we go, sometimes we'd spend 10 minutes looking for a deal in the drawer. I mean, here yeah. you got this drawer with, yeah. you know, 60, 70 deals in it. And they're all, some, some of the envelopes are an inch and a half thick. Then you go through the deal jackets, and in the deal jackets, they're not organized. So now you're looking for a piece of paper, so it, you could spend a half an hour looking for something, hmm. which is okay if you got a lot of time. But when you're when yeah. we we're not back, not when we were doing it, never like to waste time. But I noticed that um, working with you, you from the beginning, you were mentioning houses by street address. I'm thinking, well, that's interesting. But as I'm doing this, what's the difference between one house and another? The address. Yeah. I mean, it's a house, it's a house, it's a house, it's a house, it's a house. The address. Hey, remember the one on Horizon Hill? Hey, remember the one on Beacon Street? I don't remember people's names. I don't remember what kind of a deal we had, what kind of offer we made. I just remember the street address. Well, there's a big house that you can remember the picture in your head. Yeah. And there's a street address. Right. The number on the house. That's the easiest way to identify them. Right. Totally that's the reason makes why. Makes sense now. That's the reason why is because when we were trying to keep track of all the deals, we organized them by street name. Well, that's how we talk about the houses, <coughs> this street, right. that street, so we know what we're talking about. In fact, uh, we're, getting, we're, we're showing you this morning, we're building a, a new website, or build, uh, you know, my daughter and I are building a new website, and it's uh, some for our coaching clients, right, because I feel like uh, we have data everywhere. We have videos and audio. We have so much content that we, you and I are always recording something. Mm-hmm. And um, when, when my daughter, Emma, who's the geek... Because there's Jesse, who's the house girl, and then Emma, who's the geek that handles all the SEO stuff and all the computer stuff. Uh, that's how we fought. That's how. That's exactly how we all the recordings. That's how we did it all. Yeah. It was all by street names. Yeah. And and no, that doesn't mean anything to anybody except it just organizes it. Mm-hmm. So when you go on the site, you just you, you have a point of reference. 
Yeah. Well, do two or three, four deals, and you say, how do you, how do you remember which is which? It'll be that. Yeah, so, Pete. Yeah, Bill. Stop saying that. Which? I don't want to do two, three, four deals. What's my number? <laughs> <laughs> At a time. Mm -hmm. I'll say, Bill, I can, I, in my mind, when I started this, I had one little deal, and I couldn't think past that. I couldn't make another phone call. I just had this one deal in my head. So all I could think in my head was blowing up in one. I'm up to five in my head at once. Yep. You're at 15, I hear? Right. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll meet you at 10. <laughs> yeah, I like 15. 15 is where I'm comfortable. Ouch. Okay, I'm up to Above five. Above that, I, I can do it, but it gets a little little. Crazy. Oh, no. And believe it or not, <clears throat> the only thing that, that rattles me is when I have multiple closings, two or three closings with lawyers in one week. Mm. Because uh, you want the closing to be done. And they, and, and, and the irony of it is, is and, and we just talked about this the other day, uh, there's a lot of work in the beginning, and there's a lot of work at the end. Yeah. In between, there's work, but it's all spread out. Mm -hmm. Like right now, we have two construction crews working on, on our house, right? Sure. So we need to be there a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, I like to go just because, look, look at the house. Right. But I, you know, you go, there's nothing to do. They just, okay, yeah, keep doing that. You, you have a couple words with the guys and make sure you got the right thing and don't forget. Well, well we just took care of your main problem. You like to go there and tell people you own the house, which I understand. But if you had a cigar, you don't have to do that. I'll get the cigar. It's in, the, it's in my Even if you don't light it, just put it in your I've mouth. I've got it at home. I'll put it in the car. Then they all know you're the owner. And I'll put it back in a little case. <laughs> <laughs> I'll light it one day. Yeah. They, oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know about that. So, um, anyways, we totally digressed there. What was the name of the show? It is called Champions Take the Luck Out of the Game. Okay. Or back as, as, we, as I changed it, Champions Take the Luck Out of Investing. Back to our story. In fact, I think we're going to name that. That's what we're going to name it. Champions take the luck out of investing. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah. And that's a little more particular. Yeah. Let me change the book here. That. Yep. So uh, what I mean by that is one of the things that uh, I think you made mention to at one point uh, that I know is going on that I have trouble getting others to understand and this is the reason why I'm making the, the website and I'm, I'm doing some uh, uh, write-ups. We talked about this yesterday, trying to do some write-ups on what I do so I can systemize it. Yeah. So uh, you're reading Kiyosaki's book right now, mm -hmm. right, on uh, cash flow quadrant, which, by the way, what? <laughs> you're teasing me. By the way, uh, that's an awesome book to read. That yeah. is a phenomenal. Yeah. It's definitely a beginner book. I mean, Cash Flow Quadrant is uh, is by far, I think, his best writing. Yeah. I mean, it, it beats what is the original one? Uh, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Rich Dad. Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, yeah. That That's gets your good. head. That gets your head pointed in a certain direction. Yeah. Uh, it's more of a story, and you could read it almost like a novel. It isn't like dry. Right. It isn't just boring. But this this one. You know, some of the stuff I kind of know already and I've heard somewhere, but he just organized it. There's stuff I've never thought of at all, and right. I guarantee you never thought. There's four ways you can make money. Four. You don't even know what they are. You don't even know which one you are, perhaps. Yeah, so I don't, I, you keep saying that. Is it make money or four income streams? Well, income streams, Yeah. which okay. make money. It's just I don't mean like you're sitting out there with a hammer, but four income streams you can right. make. That's what you're making money. The hard way, and easy each, way, this way. Each one has its own has its own catastrophes, its own <laughs> categories, and its own tax brackets. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting. And the mindset yeah. is the hugest difference. To me, it's yeah. a huge it's mindset. Huge, difference. huge. Anyways, I'm enjoying that because uh, everything you're saying uh, it matches that and matches what I'm trying to do, and it just gets my head on straight with what I'm where I'm trying to go. One of the things that, uh, you know, I don't think I'm successful. A lot of others think I'm successful. You know, I, I still, I still, you know, when I got 500 houses or something like that, I, I don't know what I think successful is. I need mm -hmm. to work that out on my own head. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely have done more than the average guy uh, when it comes to real estate and a few other things. <clears throat> One of the things that I'm asked often is, you know, like what some of my habits are. Cigar smoking. Definitely cigar <laughs> smoking. <laughs> definitely the, the smoke shop in the good old boys club for sure. <laughs> so, um... Probably the thing that I've recognized that is the most salient thing is reading. Mm. A lot of people don't read. 
Now, I, I mean, if there's if if there's a book, I mean, I'll, I'll be on a podcast, listen to somebody else's podcast, or I'll 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 be in a store. I, I'm I'm always always reading. Mm. I try to, and I don't recently, but I try to read a couple hours a day. Mm. It's not hard to read for an hour in the morning, an hour at night. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you have trouble doing that, it's very simple. Just shut the TV off. Yeah. Because that, that's where your time is. And we're not talking novels either. I see people reading novels. That's fine. But there's so much you need to learn. I mean, you, yeah. people complain about things. They read a novel. Go read a book. That'll, that'll help you. Find yeah. anything. And Just one of my anywhere. challenges is, is that uh, I've had several people, and when I mean several, maybe a handful of people, ask me over time. Uh, to write a list of all the books I've read. Hmm. Uh, now, you're, you're in my house, in my office. I mean, you see there's there's like, I don't know how, I, I would have to spend, I would have to have my assistant list them all, and it would take her probably all day just to list them. Yeah. Because I've got, you know, I've got this bookshelf down here, and there's one upstairs in my living room. And, sure. Uh, but, they're you know, they're not simple books. They're like Think and Grow Rich and Kiyosaki series. I mean, I, in the garage, I have this stack of Kiyosaki series. What is there, 12 books? I mean, you're welcome to take them all if you want. Mm-hmm. But I've read them all, you know. It uh, doesn't mean I can't go back and read them again, which I do often. But, I le- uh, you know, I, I not only read on, on real estate, but I'm an online marketer. You know, I do SEO marketing, so I read a lot about Google and the Internet and, you know, online stuff. I read a lot of blogs and you know, and, and management, you know, I was, I was a consultant for automotive, the automotive repair industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would speak to, to three or 400 automotive repair shops a year, which meant that I would sit down with them and I would, I would travel the country. That's what I did. And I would sit down with eight, 10, 12 of them a week, you know, on a weekend, we would do a seminar and I would sit down with them, you know, on a Saturday and Sunday and I would evaluate their businesses. You know, they'd bring me a profit and loss statement, and I would go through their profit and loss statement, and I could figure out within a 90-minute period exactly what was wrong with their business. So having business systems and and understanding how things flow through a business is very uh, innate to me. It's like a natural thing Mm -hmm. uh, just because I've been trained that way. Uh, But a lot of it came from my being self-educated. I mean, I, I barely have a high school education. Uh, the only reason why I got a high school education is because the principal liked me, and I was <laughs> honest. Honestly, I was honest, and she, you know, uh, she she would tell me all the time, you know, what you did was wrong, but at least you told me the truth, mm-hmm. you know. And so my my punishments, if you would, were were lesser than others because I didn't try to bullshit her, hmm. and I'm still that way to this day. I, I mean, uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. you know, uh, I have no idea what I'm doing all that, but anyways. <clears throat> The point is, is that uh, I self-taught myself because yeah. I realized that, that at the age of 35, you know, 32 or 35, that your mind is your best weapon. Absolutely. You know, you know I went to college. I took a year of business class. Yeah. I didn't learn anything, but what color to paint the men's room and the ladies' room? I'm not kidding. Right. I didn't learn anything useful. Numbers here, numbers there, like nothing. Then I went to music school. That was helpful, but right. people get out of school and, you know, you think you're going to learn all these amazing things. Ask a kid any day. Middle school, grammar school, high school. What'd you learn today? What do they say? Well, I think nothing. the biggest, the biggest, they say problem, nothing. Right. What'd you learn? Nothing. I think the biggest problem is, and I don't want to get into this on the show, but I, I have to say it because it's just, it has to be said. You know, you go to 12 years of high school and then what, four years of college, right? So that's 16 years, mm-hmm. right? Every single one of those years you were told to study, correct? Sure. Did anybody ever teach you how to study? Nope. There you go. Well, the one time I saw it is go to your room, pick, get a desk, get a highlighter, get a nice lamp, shut the door, shut the radio off. Okay, go ahead. That was it. Right. That's how to set up. So the seriously, def- that was that was the book my kids got at home. That's right. So, so the definition, their definition of study is to memorize. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I have any questions. Right. I, that's right. I have a different perspective. I mean, study is is to understand and assimilate. You know. So so, uh, for example. Um, you know, uh, you get to the bottom of a page, right, and you don't realize what you just read. You know, simple information like, you know, there's a misunderstood word there. Well, what do you mean misunderstood word? Well, if you go back and find out that there's a word or symbol you didn't understand on that page, right after that, you go blank. Yeah. Right? So You lose it. So you got to look that word up in the dictionary and you got to understand it. Oh, they told me I didn't have to do that in school. Yeah. Yeah. Who, 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 give, me his, give me his name. <laughs> So to be honest with you, uh, this is my secret. 
uh, because all the contracts and everything that you see me fumble around with, mm -hmm. I, I hear all the time. I mean, even you heard me at the uh, closing. That we, we recorded a closing. We just yeah. did a closing yeah. last week, and we recorded it. Yeah, there's a word that popped up, right? Yeah. And we, we grabbed our phones and said, what is it? Because I do the same thing. Yeah. And that but, could be the difference between, we're trying to understand why some people just don't do as much of this. Right. And how come you did, and how come I'm dragging along and managing somehow. Yep. Of course, it helps being right next to you. But that's a huge difference, if you know what you're talking about or not, or what they're talking about or not. So that's correct. But my point, the point that I'm trying to make here is, is that... Uh, when we were with the attorney, who who told who told who what to do? Mm -hmm. I mean, I understood those forms better than he did. Yeah, well, you gave him some of the forms to use, and I instructed him. And when I read them, I told him pieces and parts were missing, and he left the room and went and put them in because mm -hmm. I wanted them a specific way. Yeah, it's not because I'm smart. It's just because I understand the words. I looked them up in a dictionary, and I made sure I comprehended them. Mm -hmm. And I only have to look that word up once in the dictionary, you know, make some sentences so I understand it in my own mind, mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. It's not very difficult, but I understood it, and I and and I'm not off. I'm just this is what this is what makes a champion. That's why I'm talking about it is understanding because the truth is that people are listening to this podcast, and some will take this with a grain of salt, and some won't. Okay. And by the way, if you have any questions on this stuff, Peter and I can help you with that. Just go to flippinghouses.club and just go to the contact page yeah. and contact us and we will help you because mm -hmm. uh, th this is this is not a loose subject. But more importantly, <clears throat> the people that are listening to this call actually believe, Peter, that real estate is buying and selling houses. They actually believe that investing is buying and selling houses. What is this, pencils now we're selling? It's money. Mm -hmm. I always say the money is in the money, mm -hmm. and the real estate is the device to get to the money. Mm -hmm. So I am telling you with all of my heart, if you want to become successful in this business, understand the paperwork. Understand the contracts. Understand what a lease option is and how to do the documents. Understand how to do a, a, a slot deal. So the paperwork is correct and legal, mm -hmm. right? Understand how to fill out a purchase and sales contract on the fly, right? Yeah. Understand which document to use when. Because I tell people all the time, and I've said it on this show, the number two, the two people that blow up my deals the most are realtors and lawyers. And the reason why I say that is because they don't understand the paperwork. I mean, look at my lawyer. We're actually training my lawyer. Yeah. Right? He was grateful. He should have paid you some, but you paid him. But he's getting a good deal out of this, too. But then we can use him some more next time. That's right. He's, he's ready to go and won't take a week this time. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> and the interesting thing is with him is, is he's constantly saying that you investors think differently. Of course. Cash flow quadrant. One, two, three, four. Right. And I don't, I don't think that I don't think that we think differently. Uh, I think that we just put the pieces of the puzzles together. Mm -hmm. So, like, what makes us different is is that I could take his legal jumbo and put it into layman's terms and explain it to my client who's 70-something years old and owned a house for 50 years so she gets it, Yeah. right? And I could talk to the mortgage guy or the private lender so he gets it. Mm -hmm. And then I could talk to the contractor so they get it. See what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, it's different... It's a different language for each person. Right. And you might talk to the lawyer f more fancy, right. fancier, but you have to, the question is who you're talking to, a two-year-old, a 90-year-old, a foreigner, or a kid, you know, who are right. you talking to? Exactly. So if you if you understand the language and the words and the, and the contracts, then you know what to stick to. So my, my money is made in all the paperwork. Yeah, and this is after you figure out the deal money part of it. That's easy. I know. I know that's. I know that's easy for me to say to you guys and the people listening. I. I th well, no. I think that's easier to learn than those long contracts with all the funny words in it. Right. You know, in a way, because I think that scares people. Right. No one. They don't have the right contracts. Then when you get them, I've gotten the contracts from. I'm reading them, and I can read. But man, they make them really rough. Yeah. 
the, the, the way they, they word the language, it's just they construct long sentences. You've got to keep track of where you're headed. It's, it's not, I don't know if they made it hard on purpose, but I don't feel yeah, user did. friendly. Yeah, they did. It seems that way. So, so uh, all I'm saying is, is that if you notice some of the contracts that I try to use, they're very, they, I, I dumb them down. They want people to understand that. Yeah, no, you sent me some of the summer. You went three in a row, and it got simpler and simpler. By the third one, I could actually just fill it out. Right. The first one's like, uh, <laughs> what do I do with this and that? Is that me or is that the other guy? Oh, right. yeah. By the third one, I just filled the whole thing out and didn't even call you back. Noticed? Right. You got it right. Yeah. By the way, what, what Bill is saying is, is so true about learning the words. And If you're listening and you're having a hard time getting off, <laughs> you know what I learned this, uh, yesterday? The definition of real, okay, as in real estate. Uh -huh. Can I throw that in? Go ahead. I thought it was real, as in it's real. You know, it's physical, it's solid. Yeah. yeah, it comes from um, real, like regal, which means royal. Right. Because who who owned all the land in the old days? That's the right. royals. And you who know, owns all the land now? The bank, the corporations. You think you own your house? You don't. Right. When you have it paid off, who owns it? The city, because they charge you tax. Right. They just keep owning you. So it's it's real as in royal. Another point, you do have to look up the definition. You have to really make sure you understand it and practice with some sentences. True story. Yesterday, my little student is lost in school. She's 12. And she says she has vocabulary where the teacher gives them a new word like every day or whatever. And what she does is she says, now use it in a sentence. He goes, you didn't tell me what it means yet. Oh, just use it in a sentence. I don't know what it means. Just use it in a few sentences. But just Google it. But I don't, but, but. She yeah. doesn't even tell them what it means. Yeah. She's at the end practicing with it before they know she's talking about it. The kid is lost. You should see the look on her face. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a dumb smile trying to get through the day. <coughs> that's, what, that's what's happening to kids in school. So you've been there. I've been there. The listeners have been there. They might be having trouble with real estate because they don't understand some of the words. So listen to Bill and me. Look them up. <laughs> you know what the first, Bill, what's the first thing I did when I studied real estate 30 years ago? I don't know. I bought a glossary. There you go. Remember the one I showed yep, you? That's right. He took, I, he took it from me. <laughs> I had to go buy six more. Yep. Oh, you bought six more. Yeah. But the first thing I did, I sat there at meetings with the glossary, and people were falling asleep. 30 people in a room, they're falling asleep, and I'd look it up, and I'd be the only one at the wake by the end. They're just conked out. Right. So get a glossary. Yeah. So, yeah, so go on Amazon. So we went way too long on that. But the point is, is the first thing that, that, that makes a champion is, is understanding the paperwork, understanding the legalese, understanding all that kind of stuff. Okay. The second thing that is that makes a champion or makes someone uh, take all the luck out of the game. So first of all, you got that. If I understand the paperwork and I understand the words and the nomenclature and how it works in this industry. And you're studying, you're reading the books, you're learning. Yeah. Then, then it becomes just easy for me to make decisions when it's time. It's not luck. It's just easy to be able to make that decision. Yeah. Right? And no deal is picture perfect. No deal is book perfect. Mm. Okay. There's classics. There's usuals. You know, there are stereotypes, mm -hmm. you know, but none of them are the exact same way. Right. None of them are. Close enough is close enough? Yeah. So, well, they, I put them in buckets. Mm. So if, if they're in one bucket, then, you know, like, for example, if it's a slot deal, it's in one bucket. Which sure. is which is what I want to talk about next. The most important thing that uh, I do is I use formulas and I use rule of thumbs. And that's very difficult for a lot of people because money is a serious thing. Mm -hmm. So they think. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is. Money to me is no different than like a car or a house. I mean, they could be replaced. Yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> especially when you know how to make money out of thin air, right? Which is what we do. You know, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's making money with your mind, you know, thinking. Yeah. People can't believe we get a house under control for $10 or $100. Right. And uh, six months later, make thirty or forty thousand dollars, and cost us hundred dollars to get in. They they look at me. I tell them, how much it cost you. I said hundred dollars. Right. They stare at me. Right. W would you would you steal it? No, you don't. Well, we're, it. well we're we the house it. the house that we're in right now, right? I think we're going to be what one hundred sixty one hundred sixty five thousand dollars into the house. Yeah. How much do we have invested? Hundred. I read. I gave her a check for hundred dollars. Yeah. 
Yeah. I bought which, some, by the, which, by the way, I gave her the check. Yeah. How long ago did I give her that check? Um, oh, a month. It's yeah. way back. She Five just ca- She just she cashed just, it. <laughs> oh, yeah, like that check. Yeah. yeah, she believed you either way. I've done deals like this, and oh, yeah, I forgot to send the guy the check in the mail because he's out of state. Yeah. And the deal's rolling. Oh, here's your $10. Yeah. Oh, I bought some grass seed and fertilizer, too. Oh. There you go. <laughs> so, um, so I use rule of thumb. So what happens is, is people uh, people get too hung up on exactness. Uh, the classic, the classic. This is absolutely the classic example. Construction costs. Oh yeah. How many people? I mean, even we had Michael on last week, right? And yeah. he's got all these. He 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 still contractor. He still doesn't get it. Really? Well, we're gonna find out tomorrow when we see him. But he still doesn't get it. He, he you know, like a kitchen's eight thousand, and, and, and I'm like, I I don't do any of that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't do any of that. I guess the reason why is because I believe this could be true for you, not be true for you, but I really believe. The true intelligence, true, like real intellectual intelligence, Mm -hmm. is the ability to make something really simple. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So so it's not how much data you have. It's not not how you use the data. It's the fact that you completely have so much competence in that topic or in that subject that you could just make it really simple. Yeah, one, two, three. Yep. <clears throat> and I really, and you know that I constantly strive for that. I mean, I constantly strive for that. In my life, in my business, I do it with, with everything. I'm always trying to make it simple. Yeah. And the real reason, the real reason, and this is not a derogatory statement, I'm just a dumbass. <laughs> I don't want to have to worry about all these datums, all this significance, and all this stuff. And I see students and I see people that I work with. You know, we, we have a coaching group that's, what, a dozen people that I work with every week. We're, we're going to finish this recording. We're going to one of my students. I pulled in my personal realtor, which I now, – now there's two people, Peter, that I'm not going to – that I don't tell people about, my private lender and my personal realtor. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, those those two names are not going to be ever discussed. Okay? So today she's going under an assumed name? Yeah, we're calling her. Well, I, I Jeff. had to like I had to like bond the student because I don't normally put the two of them together. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't I don't want that. It's, yeah. This is like my private stock, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and it's just it's just for them more than me. You know, I just I just don't want that to be, right? <clears throat> so, and when I mean private realtor, I mean she does she works just for me. She is not she she doesn't take other listings. She doesn't take other sales. She's exclusive with you and uh, when I say me, you and mm-hmm. I, us. Mm-hmm. She does nothing else. She's done a few. She'll buy a house for herself. Yep. But that's it. She doesn't work for anybody else. She's completely exclusive. Okay. Yeah. And completely understands because she's done sixteen or eighteen of her own renovations. So she completely gets what we do, mm-hmm. and she's awesome to work with. Okay. So. My point is, is that when I talk to someone like her, we don't get into the kitchens five thousand, the bathrooms three thousand. I just use standard formulas, mm-hmm. and they always my formula comes within two thousand dollars. I can have a renovation project that's ten <clears throat> grand or seventy grand, and it comes within two thousand dollars all the time, every time. All right, I can't do it any other way. Well, it doesn't seem like you need to. You got it. And I know you've done this. And Actually, if you don't do a show on that, I need to take 10 minutes because uh, I want to start doing more presentations on my own. And I don't have that formula yet. I know it's this or that or this, but I need to know a little bit more, so I'm sure of that one. Right. So That's on I'm, my bucket list, I'm glad by the you way. bring that up. That's on my list. Because I want, I want to clarify something uh, about this podcast. We give a lot of information on this podcast, mm-hmm. okay? But it's just the tip of the iceberg. We do a live meeting the third Wednesday of the month, every month. We probably won't do it on Christmas, but the third Wednesday of every month. Mm-hmm. Actually, we probably will. The third Wednesday of every month, we do we do a live meeting. And I noticed that since we started doing the podcast, that the meeting attendance went from, you know, 40 people down, you know, 35, 30, 35, 40 people down mm-hmm. to like 20. Mm-hmm. 
And I feel like it's because people listen to podcasts because it started that. Yeah. But I want people that are listening to know that things like when I'm talking about the actual formula of how to do renovations, mm-hmm. that's where I do that is in a live event. Mm-hmm. You know, the actual uh, deal calculations, uh, the math, yeah. you know, uh, deal structuring, we call it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where I do it. You know, uh, uh, the live meeting is so much more than what we talk about because what we do is we just talk about it here but in the meeting we actually do things yeah get much more practical like hand, more hands-on examples yeah and i give away i give away things. i give away forms i give away i give away things yeah. when i'm there yeah i give away like like people you know, don't believe like why are you doing this for free right right and i give stuff away because i respect people coming and spending a couple hours with us yeah. you know to, to, to educate themselves yeah. right i mean well, they're stuck, too. They're stuck. They don't know how to do this step, that stuff. You give them at least something so they can move forward. Right. Even the <laughs> folks that have spent a lot of money with other guys, they still uh, are lacking a lot of practical uh, skills and, and data. Right. Plus, the the networking, I mean, look what look what the meeting's done for us. I mean, it's, what, about a year now? Yeah. And, I mean, we've, we've bought houses out of there mm-hmm. and did renovations. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've partnered with some people. Yep. Uh, we found a private lender. With a lot of money, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, a couple private lenders. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we found uh, attorneys and insurance people that are there. Well, that's who shows up. All these, all the different trades that have something right. to do with it. So, uh, those are just me. So, what do I get out of it? I, I get a group of people that I can tap into. That's what networking means. Mm-hmm. Is I get a group of people that are like-minded that you can tap into it. And this podcast cannot do that. This podcast cannot do that. It's a good start. At least you're getting some data, and I understand you're driving around or you're exercising or whatever, and you're listening to this. But the real thing to do is to get involved with other people that minimally get motivated, get you motivated, to talk to other people that are doing deals, and they inspire you, and you make friends, and you talk to one another. We've got people like that. We talk to I've talked to people throughout the weeks. That are doing that are doing things sometimes good sometimes bad i've learned just as much from some of my clients or some of the attendees and they've learned from me it, you just can't go wrong with networking no uh I'm, a matter of fact i don't think you can do this without it no because i called you last year because i know i couldn't do it without it. and i've worked on other business and i realized i need a team i need this 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 like three four guys and I put one together and almost made something go, and I switched to this because this was just right. more sensible. But if you, with all you know, need a team, just some other people to work with, you sitting at home, if you're not getting very far, you need a team. You need other people to talk to. At the end of meetings, I notice people, they're, they're in little huddles, you notice? At the end right. of the night, they don't leave. They, they, they wind up in little huddles. Right. They start talking to each other. Right. You can't do something like this alone. And Maybe. the meetings are vital for that. Yeah. And you, there's not you need many, a team. There's not many. So... So if you're in Connecticut, there's, you know, I'm going to throw names. There's Connecticut RIA, which is awesome. I went to it for a bunch of years. I used to work with them. Um, there's 100 people there. That's good. But uh, I'd rather have our group because there's not 100 people there. What there is is there's a dozen people or, or a dozen and a half people that are actually doing things. Yeah. They're not yeah. buying materials. Yeah. No offense. Yeah. So, so you know, one of the things with the RIAs, which I know I own one. I don't, I don't operate it anymore, but I own one. Uh, I had a RIA in Connecticut and one in Rhode Island, and I did the whole dog and pony show. Mm-hmm. And what RIAs are all about is, is uh, presenting materials to you, and they split, they split the cost. You know, so if the guy's selling a thousand dollar product, the speaker takes five hundred, and the RIA takes five hundred. Yeah. And so every month there's a new speaker because that's how they make their money. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that because you do need to have some of the stuff that they present is awesome stuff. I bought a lot of it. I bought yeah. fifty thousand dollars worth of stuff like that. But that's only half the. That's only half the the right. uh, the, the the deal. Right. So, uh, all I'm saying is, is if you've done that or haven't done that, if you've done that, you definitely need to come to our live meetup because I can get you to implement that stuff because yeah. I I know most of the materials that are out there, and we have several people that have spent. A lot of 15, money. 15,000, 20,000, Yeah, tens of thousands. Of well, that's dollars. why I called you. I didn't want to spend seventeen grand. I knew it was coming. So before they sprang it on me on Sunday, I called you on Saturday. Bill, they're going to spring one on me. And I wouldn't mind, 
but they weren't in Connecticut. They were right. far, far away. Well, how much can they help me far, far away? Right. So that's how I uh, opened my mouth. Yeah, so my mantra is is that uh, if you're going to get an education, uh, so if you're going to, and this is going back to what we were talking about before, uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna teach a guy how to be an auto mechanic, right, and teach him how to fix a car, what's the best test that you can give him? Uh, written examination? No. <laughs> Damn. He can memorize that. <laughs> sure. Give him a broken car and ask him to fix it. That's right. Right. So if you're gonna teach an auto mechanic how to fix a car, then give him a broken car and say fix it and mm -hmm. watch him. Mm -hmm. If he could do it, then he's a mechanic. If what? he can't, then he just he he has understoods or. He memorized something and it didn't make it. Whatever it is, he doesn't have it straight in his head. Yeah. But even if you do understand it, don't you have to practice? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I Doctors have, do. Lawyers do. They call it a practice. <laughs> yeah. Someday they'll get it right. Yeah. Hey, I have great friends that are doctors and all that, but I hand my music students a guitar and say, play the song. Yeah. And I have to do that. So so that's what that's what our our whole our whole group is about. The live group is is a place for us to come to unite once a week. I mean, once a month. And talk about our our successes, and if there's things that don't happen, then that's my job is to to, to unbug them, yeah, or un unmix them so that they can get going again. And how many times have we, you know, like our coaching group, somebody will get in, they'll get onto the call. We do a call once a week, and they'll get onto the call, and next thing I know, the whole deal is like going again. Oh, you yeah. saved things that were just gone. One of the students just finished a huge reno, stunning, beautiful house. And from the beginning, she was going to drop it. Yeah. She she called she me and it. told me that she, because she had problems with structural problems. Yeah. And she said that she was not going to buy it. And, and I talked her out of it. And uh, you showed her how it could work. Yeah. And she's probably going to make 150, 180. Yeah. Thousand right? dollars profit. Yeah. And it's And it's because, it's because. She did something that most were not willing to do, and I knew how to do it. Yeah, I mean, she did it. I just guided her. Yeah. I mean, she, I don't want to take credit for her deal. No, you had the we, data. She had the gumption, but yeah. she, she didn't know how to fix it. I mean, you have to understand a lot about a subject to fix any stupid thing that comes up. Yeah. And you always seem to have a way to get around things or get through things and keep keep things going until if it's not right, it's not right. But if it's right, you go. And it's not because I'm smart. It's just experience. Mm -hmm. So let's get back to this. So champions... Uh, take the luck out of things. Mm -hmm. So I think I think that we've covered that. Except uh, probably the most valuable thing that I think takes the luck out of anything is the math. The math. Deal structuring. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like for example, uh, you take a free and clear house. This this is a common strategy. So. You buy a house. Uh, you buy a house for two hundred sixty thousand. Sell it for two hundred sixty thousand and make eighty four thousand. What? Go uh, back. Two hundred sixty so, minus two hundred sixty zero. Yeah. Z I get zero when I do that math, Bill. What kind of math are you using? New math? So let me Common add, Core. What are you doing, let Bill? Me, let me let me explain. So, uh, so the house is worth two hundred forty thousand. And I pay two sixty. Did oh, I pay too much? Absolutely. You went twenty over. Uh, okay. So the question is: Is do you? If you buy a house for two hundred forty thousand and you pay a thirty year mortgage, how much do you end up paying? Oops, like three times the amount. Yeah. So pay, overpaying by twenty thousand is not a big deal. Now you look like a genius. Yeah. <laughs> He's a ch champion. These are champion money uh, numbers now. That's right. The trick in the deal is is that I explain to the owner that I'm not going to pay them interest. I pay principal only payments. So that means that the forty, the extra twenty thousand is their is their interest. Yeah. Because I put it in the in the price of the house, it changes their tax bracket. Because most people, when they're selling their house, don't have tax ramifications. Some do if it's a if it's a house they're not living in, but most don't. Yeah. But if they were to take if they were to take interest over the years, every year they have to claim that interest. I deduct it; they claim it. Yeah. So it's an income for them. So it changes their tax bracket. Okay. So it's it's better tax wise. Mm -hmm. Okay. But pay attention to this. I sell the house on a lease option. In other words, I put a tenant. I do it on a rent to own. I put a tenant right. in there. They give me a down payment of three to five percent, and they make monthly payments. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just say in this particular case that the owner I agreed to pay him a thousand dollars a month. Okay. Principal only payments. Mm. 
So my first month, if I pay him $1,000 on a $260,000 loan, how much do I owe him after the first month? Two fifty nine, as right. opposed to a bank where your first payment, your your principal may may go down fifty bucks. Right. Or, huge, or huge dollar. difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, huge difference. Yeah. Huge difference. So, because I'm principal only payments, what happens is I uh, I reduce the principal. Okay. So now the tenant's saying they're paying me eighteen hundred and fifty dollars a month, right? So the first thousand goes to the goes to the owner. Yep. Okay. I pay my taxes, my insurance, and I got, say, a $400 positive cash flow. Good. Okay. So $400 times 12 is 4800 right? That's good, too. Times five years mm. is 24000 right? Because you take 400 times 60 yeah. months is yeah. 24000 Yeah. Okay. So if every month I'm doing a principal reduction of $1,000. Yeah. Plus right? 400 Plus 400 So that means I'm making $1,400 a month, right? Right. Because when the tenant is paying me, the only thing they're getting for their money is use of the property. Yeah, they don't own the house yet. They're still they, renting. There's no principal reduction. No. So they're buying the house for me for 260000 mm -hmm. right? And they rent until they can get qualified with no principal reduction. And that's the reason they're paying that little bit extra because they're in that bracket where they can't get a mortgage or loan yet. 81% of this country right now is not mortgageable. Right. Because I know somebody here, and they go, why would somebody pay more? Well, because right. those folks are in a little bit of trouble. They'll pay rent the rest of their lives if they don't get into a deal like this. I looked at a piece of property last night, okay, in Middletown. Mm -hmm. And uh, the owner is in Arizona, okay, and they owe like an extra 5000 of what the house is worth. Mm -hmm. I think the house is worth two hundred. they owe two hundred five, something like that. Yeah, I know that deal. So I have the tenant, their tenant in the house, okay? So... Pay attention to what I'm telling you because I'm diverting for a second. So the house is worth 200 They owe 205 right. Where are they going to sell it? You can't sell on the real estate with a realtor because the closing cost and all that stuff, you way below. It's going to cost them $20,000. Out of their pocket. Out of their pocket to yeah. sell. It's going to cost them minimally 10, and, 10%. And that's why they're renting. Right. They're renting until they find a solution. Right. And they can't seem to get the principal reduction down because it was 240 Yeah. Because they bought it in the peak of the market. That's not, I have one of those. Right. So now pay attention to what happens here. This is what I'm talking about. You take the luck out of it. This is champion deal structuring. This is champion deal structuring. So I go to the house. I look at the house. Big house. Four or five bedrooms. Two bathrooms. Oh. Gorgeous house. Like back in the 40s and 50s, this was like where doctors and lawyers lived. Mm. Okay. The whole neighborhood. Gorgeous neighborhood. Mm. Absolutely stunning school system. Everything going for it. Mm. But old. Mm. Okay. The tenant's walking around trying to convince herself that she needs to move. They're packing. They're packing because they're moving. Hmm. Okay? Yeah. I have an owner that's motivated. I have a tenant that's motivated. So I say to her, why don't you just buy the house? Right? And she stumbles around. I asked her four times before she gave me the answer that they're actually in the middle of bankruptcy. Hmm. So I told her, point blank, what if I can buy this house? What if you could buy this house and keep paying the same amount of money that you're paying now? Would you do it? I'd be interested. So I'm going to go back and speak to her and her husband. Hmm. I can actually do a slot deal. Mm -hmm. right? I could pick up three or four grand mm. to do paperwork, mm. just an afternoon's worth of paperwork. I could put a buyer... In a house that can't, that thinks they can't, they spend ten grand on this house. They put, they put a oh, garden. They, they put a garden in the back with a pool. They, wow. they, they landscaping. They painted on a house they don't own. Right? Wow. In a great school system, they love their neighbor. She's like, I mean, she doesn't want to move, right? She's got all these excuses about the heat and the air conditioning. Wow, bankruptcy. But she's in bankruptcy and can't buy it. So now they're looking to downsize because they want to go somewhere else. So here's the point. How, 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 how I'm a champion. Why am I a champion? Because I'm going to take a person that wants to stay in the house and get them to buy the house. Which they think they couldn't have done. And I'm going to take the person that's in Arizona that thinks this house is annoying because they're in Arizona for like seven or eight years or ten years. Oh boy. 
And the only reason why they have the house is because they don't want to come to the closing table with 20 grand. Of course. So I'm going to sell them their house and not have them come to the table for 20 grand and relieve them of their mortgage on a delayed cash out. Yeah. And so I'm helping a person that can't sell a house and I'm helping a person that can't buy a house. They're already joined together. They just it's don't know like how to do it. I they know. don't know how to do the paperwork. I'm, I'm glad, you, glad you found somebody who do this. I've tried that a couple of times. It doesn't always work, but, you know, because they're, they're tenants. But these guys is perfect for this. I don't know if it's going to work either. No, I don't know what you, the husband's going to say. That's, that's the best opportunity for both parties. My point is, is because at the beginning of this show, we talked about understanding the paperwork. It's not about the real estate. There was a situation there, and there's mm-hmm. paperwork and legal documents that have to be constructed and when you understand how to do those you make money now is three grand a lot of money or five grand a lot of money for doing paperwork it's 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 not a lot of money no but i could tell you one thing you do one of those a month right we talked about this last week right what's the rule on money on how much money we make it's connected to time yeah you're not going to spend a lot of time on little rinky dink deals so making three grand for a couple hours with the paperwork is is good money i'm in (laughs) <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, renovation, when well, you got to spend weeks and months on it, you got to make 30, 40 grand because mm-hmm. you're spending more time. And that's how they're structured. Right. I mean, you know, if, if it was two weeks, it'd be a $3,000 profit, but they are big and that's why they are more money. You know, people think, oh, they get in real estate and make a lot of money. Well, you're going to work for it one way or the other. Right. But if you want to make some decent money, do it. Right. But you're going to work for it. Right. Don't expect just magic. You know, if you're doing that, just go keep smoking your drugs because it's real life. But even more important, Peter. If you have a job and you don't have a lot of time, then don't go to try and find an MLS piece of property and try to find a lawyer and a deal with the banks. That's the wrong way to spend your time. Go find one of these slot deals like I'm talking about Mm -hmm. and make three grand or five grand and then find another one and make three grand or five grand. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon you're making 50 grand a year and it's like, oh, maybe maybe I can work one less day on my job. Yeah. Then you can do the next kind of deal that's a little more labor intensive, a little more complicated, work your way up. So that's not luck. That's being a champion. Mm-hmm. That's reverse engineering it. You understand? Absolutely. So what you got to do is you got to say, okay, I have 10 hours a week. What can I do for 10 hours a week? That's the best way to spend the 10 hours. Right. Like you said, you did it part-time and you're making decent money without all the overhead and all that stuff. Just You, you pared it down to just nitty-gritty, just get the job done and get the profit in. Right. I had my daughter helping me, but I paid her. Mm-hmm. You know, not not a lot. I mean, she'd make five hundred or thousand dollars a deal, mm-hmm. but it was just signing documents, doing this. I tell her what to do. Go do this. I tell the lawyer what to do. I do it on the phone. Mm-hmm. Being in Canada on my telephone, mm-hmm. telling the lawyer what to do. Right? Spend a half an hour with him on the phone. Was the phone call expensive? Yeah, but look how much money I made. Sure. You know what I mean? I so, like so you have to reverse engineer your time. Now, if you're doing it full time. That's a different story. You got 40 hours a week. Like the student we're going to see today, she got 40 hours a week. I'll guarantee you, I'll guarantee you, she's wasting too, way too much time. She's the, There's where people get in trouble. Now she's surfing the internet. She's on the MLS looking at properties. She's doing all the things thinking that she's doing real estate mm. investing. Thinking mm. that she's doing real estate investing. Occupying her time because... Her time is less valuable than someone else's. Not less valuable, but she has more of it. Yeah, and they plan it all out so that, you know, the finances are covered, the husband's working, whatever. It's not like, okay, I don't have a job. I'm broke. You know, I better do something right. So it's a little bit too comfortable, shall we say? Right. Right. And Uh, some people are like that. Not hungry enough? Yeah. So I could tell you this, that when I first got started, one of my mentors told me that, and I still live by this law. I never use never use my own money in a deal. You know why? Because you get lazy and you make mistakes. Because you're willing to lose your money, oh, but not lose somebody else's. You know, I was thinking it'd be the opposite. I would never have guessed it, but it's true. Yeah. You know, you're much more careful about somebody else. You don't don't want to screw up your your private lender, your relative, your friend. Right. Oh yeah, you're gonna work harder. Not to look like the jerk, right. and mess somebody. Your own That's money, funny. you could make the mistake. Nobody would know that. Yeah, you're not accountable to yourself enough. That's funny, right? So the best thing you can do in real estate is learn how to do real estate with no money. 
And then later on, when you get money, and then use your own money and save the 9%, and that's okay. But ingrain the habits when you have no money first. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So this is why it's not luck, because this, this, the, these philosophies, the mindset, mostly, like you said earlier, the mindset is everything. Yeah. The mindset is absolute. So the mindset of I don't have any money and I got to do this deal. It's much better than I got a million dollars in the bank. I could just write a check for it. Hmm. So instead of paying two fifty, you might pay two two thirty, because your hard money lender will only give you two thirty. Yeah. So you'll find a way to pay the two thirty. Right. Yeah, you got to be a little smarter, work a little harder, or just know know how to how it works. Or if you got to pay the two fifty, structure the deal a little bit better. Right. Mm-hmm. So let's go back to our two hundred sixty thousand dollar deal. Because we completely diverted on that, so we bought bought for two sixty, sold for two sixty. The tenants paying us eighteen hundred dollars a month. Okay, we're paying a thousand dollar reduction, principal reduction. Yep, and making a four hundred dollar positive cash flow every month. Right, so that's fourteen hundred dollars a month. Right. How many deals do you know can you do that? How many investors do you know can make fourteen hundred dollars on one door per month? Uh, you know. People probably don't believe it, but I, I've seen, I've made those offers too. I got close on a couple, so it's, it's you can do them. Yeah. I've, I've had, all the pieces have to fit, but absolutely. Right. Yeah, this is not something you're going to find every day, yeah. you know, but it's just one yeah, of the you, deal structures. You have seven ways you can do it, so, you know, there's some simplicities of how to pinpoint what you should or shouldn't do. So if you're making, that's right, so if you're making $1,000 a month on principal reduction, that's thousand dollars times sixty months. That's sixty grand. Yeah. Plus you got four hundred dollars a month profit for sixty months. Mm-hmm. That's twenty four thousand. Sixty plus twenty four, eighty four. Booyah! Right. The tenant that's in the house cashes out at the end of five years. Right. Mm-hmm. The end of five years, they go get their two hundred sixty thousand dollar mortgage. They give you two hundred sixty. You only owe two hundred. Yeah. Plus, you made twenty four thousand along the way, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. That's being a champion. And that's being patient too. Yeah. One thing people have to understand about this: if you're uh, paycheck week to week, you expect to work five days and get paid. Right. Imagine working three months and waiting for your check. Right. Welcome to real estate. The difference is, is you don't get a five hundred dollar check or a thousand dollar check. No. You get a thirty thousand dollar. That's right. But you have to be patient. Right. You know, once you get enough going, then the pipeline feeds and, so, you know. So to your point, patience. you go back to what I'm saying is in the beginning, if you do have a job, then just use your time correctly. Do some slot deals. Yeah. You know, do a lease option deal. Do an option deal. Right? Come to our meetings and learn how to do the math. Don't think that you got enough on this podcast. Come to the meeting and actually do it. Yeah. Actually bum around with us. You know, I mean, I've taken students out on presentations with me mm-hmm. and, and taught them how I talk to people. There's a whole methodology on how to talk to somebody. How do you get somebody to give you a $240,000 house with no money down and promise to pay? Yeah. How do you do that? It might be numbers on, on, on our end, but it's humans and emotion and, right. and problems and concerns and what do I do if and how do I do when and you know how to handle those right. in sequence so the person... Not gets tricked. I mean, the house we just did. Um, I need a copy of her 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 re- referral. Oh my God, yeah. she must have said fifteen times in the in the five times I saw her. Thank you so much. You know how much trouble you saved me. You relieved my mind. I slept well last night. I can't night. believe I found you guys. Yeah, and people think how, you you robbing old ladies. No, because yeah. there's three people in a deal. It's not just the buyer, the seller trying to squeeze each other for as much right. as they can. There's also the ultimate buyer. Yep. Who has some input. So between the three, it can be structured so that money happens without squeezing each other, buyer or seller. Right. That's what's different about this and I call it pencils. Right. So the point in today's show is what makes a champion is these rule of thumbs kind of being loose a little bit until the deal gets structured and then knowing how to put it on paper so everybody agrees. Mm-hmm. And then, and then everybody knows what to execute. Each person has their own portion of the deal, and they understand it. And you explain to them how to ex- execute their end of it. 
mm-hmm. and you're patient and help them with that, right? Yep. It works. It works. So you don't have to be a genius. What you need to do is just go find one deal and work your way through it. Because the first deal you find is not the first deal you're going to buy. Mm-mm. Because if you need to have 10 things, if you need to learn 10 things in a deal, the first deal you might get experience with the first two or three. Yeah. The second deal you might get experience with the first five. Mm-hmm. The third deal you might get experience with the first eight. Mm-hmm. Right? You're going to go through those deals. They're going to blow up in your face. But every one of them, you're going to learn something until you get all 10 pieces. Mm-hmm. Then you do it a couple times with all the 10 pieces, and now you're good at it. So the best thing you can do is just get out there and make offers and stir up the pot. Mm-hmm. That makes you a champion. You, you take the luck out of it by, by having formulas and by having rules of thumb. And some scripts. And some scripts. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And, and, and different things like that. So the luck comes from just knowing, really knowing, and being an investor, being a professional home buyer, and being had it, and truly, truly, truly know your job. Okay? And that doesn't take years to do. No, but you helped me when you told me your first deals, you got a few steps in and it blew up, and you got a few further steps. So thank God, because you think, I got the deal, I have to see it to the end. Maybe right. not. Right. You know, my, my, uh, my musical analogy for the musicians out there, I have my students play songs along with the, the play-along CD. Yep. They get five notes in, crash. I go, good, go for six. Right. And I do that, and within five minutes, I can get them up to 12 or 13. And I go home and get the rest. I do that with them. Right. Well, I can't do it. Well, how much can you do? Can you do the first few steps of the real estate deal? Can you play the first 10 notes of a song? Good. Go for 12. Go, you know, just keep going. Keep pushing. It's perfect. Right? What do, you, what do you hear me say when I'm coaching my clients? What's the most common thing I say to everyone? Just do the next step. Why are you trying to work on the driveway when we haven't negotiated the deal yet? Mm-hmm. Just do the next step. And that's my, that's my secret formula. Just do the next step. Get through that and then go on to the next step and then mm-hmm. on to the next step and on to the next step. And then sooner or later you will close. Or you'll get a check. Mm-hmm. But just just concentrate on the next step. Yep. So if you if you if you have nothing to make an offer on, figure out how to make an offer on a house. Mm-hmm. Find a house to make an offer on. That's your next step. Yeah. And then and then and then once you find the house, then figure out which one of the seven deals mm-hmm. you should use. Go on to flippinghouses.club, watch my videos. They're all described there. It's free. Right? Figure out which one of those strategies you can use based on the loan to value ratio and exactly what I teach you there. Yeah. That's the next step. What step is after that? Okay, so you gotta go out and not so now you got the customer qualified, mm-hmm. the seller qualified. The next step after that is qualify the house. Go out and look at the house, see what it needs for repairs, make sure it's not dysfunctional, you know, with weird setups and layouts, make sure that it doesn't have a driveway on top of the roof, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. Then you qualify the house. Yep. What's the next step after that? Which paperwork you got to use to close the deal? You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And this is exactly what I'm going to cover. Uh, by the time this comes out, it'll probably be too late. But on the October 29th event that I'm going to do, yeah, this is what I'm going to talk about is the steps, mm-hmm. the exact steps. So um, if you're listening to this podcast and there's still time, October 29th at 128 Center Street in Wallingford, we're going to do a one-day $79 workshop that uh, takes us through the steps. That's right. $79, it can't be very valuable. Yeah, right. No, I'm saying that because I, people charge a lot for some of these things, and it, we can do it at this price because we, we just want people to get started and learn something, and then if they like it, stick around and do more. That is correct. That is half of my motivation. The other half of my motivation is this. For $79, I could put a bunch of people in a room, and I can record it. Mm-hmm. And I can put it on my coaching site, mm-hmm. and I don't have to keep doing it over and over and over and over. Every time I get a new coaching client, I got to do it again. Oh yeah, yeah. So this way here, I can put it on my, I can give it to my coaching clients and say, here are the steps. Go watch the video. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to do it myself. And that's that. I'm just being lazy. Well, no, that's smart. <laughs> that's developing your materials. Right. You know. So that's what we're doing. That's awesome. Okay, Peter, so uh, good show. We covered a lot of profound things.
And great little side venues. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the name of the show was Champions Take the Luck Out of Investing. We changed the title in the middle of the show. That's right. We never did that before. No. So it's all good. right. That's true. You nailed it. So make sure you visit us at uh, flippinghouses.club. Get your free videos. And uh, if you have any questions, just go into the contact section. I personally answer those every single day. So if you have any questions and you need to contact me, that is the place to do. If you have a deal, if you have mm. a piece of property and you need help with or deal structuring, go to that page, flippinghouses.club, fill out the contact information, and I will either pick up the phone and call you or we'll do it by email. Usually I just pick the phone up and call you because I'm a people guy and find out what you got and I'll help you with the deal structure. All right? He's, he ain't kidding, folks. Over and out till next week, Pete. Thanks for listening. See you next week. We'll see you then. Yay!